would indicate that with a circle and a dot. In other words, for this vector, B cross A would have exactly the same magnitude, no difference, but it would be coming out of the blackboard. In other words, A cross B equals minus B cross A. Whereas A dot B is the same as B dot A. We will encounter cross products when we deal with torques and when we deal with angular momentum, which is not the easiest part of 801. Let's take an extremely simple example. Again, I don't mean to insult you with such a simple example, but you will get chances, more advanced chances on your assignment. Suppose I gave the vector A is x roof, it's a unit vector in the x direction. That means A of x is one, and A of y is zero, and A of z is zero. And suppose B is y roof. That means B of y is one, and B of A is, B of x is zero, and B of z is zero. What now is the dot product, the cross product A cross B? Well, you can apply that recipe, but it's much easier to go to the x, y, z axis that we have here. A was in the x direction, the unit vector, and B in the y direction. I take A in my hand, I rotate over the smallest angle, which is 90 degrees to y, and my corkscrew will go up. So I know the whole thing already. I know that this cross product must be Z roof. The magnitude must be one, that's immediately clear, but I immediately have the direction by using the corkscrew rule. Now, if you are very smart, you may say, aha, you find plus Z only because you have used this coordinate system. If this axis had been X and this one had been Y, then the cross product and X and Y would be in the minus Z direction. Yeah, you're right. But if you ever do that, I will kill you. You will always, always have to work with what we call a right-handed coordinate system. And a right-handed coordinate system, by definition, is one whereby the cross product of x with y is z and not y minus z. So whenever you get in the future involved with cross products and torques and angular momentum, always make yourself an xyz diagram for which x cross y is z. Never, ever make it such that x cross y is minus z. You're going to hang yourself. Because for one thing, that wouldn't work anymore. So be very, very careful. It must work. If you use the right-hand corkscrew rule, make sure you work with the right-handed coordinate system. All right. Now the worst part is over. And now I would like to Write down for you, we, get, we pick up some of the, the fruits now, although it will penetrate slowly. I want to write down for you a equations for a moving particle, a moving object in three-dimensional space. A very complicated motion, which I can hardly imagine what it's like. It is a point that's going to move around in space. And it is this point, P. This point, P, is going to move around in space. And I call this vector OP. I call that now vector R. And I give it a sub-index T, which indicates it's changing with time. I call this location A of Y. I'm going to call that Y of T. It's changing with time. I call this X of T. It's going to change with time. And I call this point z of t, which is going to change with time, because point p is going to move. And so I'm going to write down the vector r in its most general form that I can do that. r, which changes with time, is now x of t, which is the same as a of x there before, times x roof, plus 
y of t, y roof, plus z of t, z roof. I have decomposed my vector r into three independent vectors. Each one of those change with time. What is the velocity of this particle? Well, the velocity is the first derivative of the position. So that is dr dt. So there we go. First the derivative of this one, which is dx dt x roof. I'm going to write for dx dt x dot because I'm lazy, and I'm going to write for d2x dt squared x double dot. It's often done, but not in your book. But it's a notation that I will often use because otherwise the equations look so clumsy. Plus y dot times y roof plus z dot times z roof. So z dot is the z dt. What is the acceleration as a function of time? Well, the acceleration as a function of time equals dv dt. So that's the second derivative of x versus time. And so that becomes x double dot times x roof plus y double dot times y roof plus z double dot times z roof. And look what we have now accomplished. It looks like minor, but it's going to be big later on. We have a point P going in three-dimensional space. And here we have the entire behavior of the object as it moves its projection along the x-axis. This is the position, this is its velocity, and this is its acceleration. And here you see the entire behavior on the z-axis. This is the position on the z-axis, this is the velocity component in the z-direction, and this is the acceleration in the z-axis. And here you have the y. In other words, we have now a three-dimensional motion we have cut into three one-dimensional motions. This is a one-dimensional motion. This is a behavior only along the x-axis, and this is a behavior only along the y-axis, and this is a behavior only along the z-axis, and the three together make up the actual motion of that particle. So what have we gained now? It looks like, this looks like a mathematical zoo. You would say, well, if this is what it's going to be like, it's going to be hell. Well, not quite. In fact, it's going to help you a great deal. First of all, if I throw up a tennis ball in class, like this, then the whole trajectory is, the whole trajectory is in one plane, in the vertical plane. So even though it is in three dimensions, we can always represent it by two axes, by two dimensionally, a y axis and an x axis. So already, the three dimensional problem often becomes a two dimensional problem. We will, with great success, analyze these trajectories by decomposing this very complicated motion. Imagine what an incredibly complicated arc that is. And yet we are going to decompose it into a motion in the x direction, which lives a life of its own, independent of the motion in the y direction, which lives a life of its own. And of course you always have to combine the two to know what the particle is doing. We know the equations so well from our last lecture from one-dimensional motion with a constant